Hello, welcome to the Lipids and Your Lifestyle webinar. Today, we're gonna to be talking about meat and how to incorporate it into a Mediterranean diet. So today, we're gonna to be talking about proper serving sizes of meat, as well as the nutrition components of meat, as well as plant-based sources of protein, some of the health effects from meat, as well as some shopping and storage tips, and lastly, we're going to finish with some recipes that you can try at home. So a, a daily goal for meat consumption is no more than one serving of a three ounce portion per day. Um, ideally, we do not recommend eating meat every day. Um, instead, we recommend one to two times per month. Um, but we're going to go into what that looks like and how to make that work into your lifestyle. Um, some meal tips that we're gonna talk about a little bit more in detail a little later um, is opting for leaner cuts of meat, such as pork tenderloin, trimmed chicken thighs, lean ground beef, as well as avoiding processed meats, such as hot dogs, bologna, lunch meat, pepperoni, sausage, and bacon. So what does a three ounce portion look like? Um, a good rule of thumb is it should fit in the palm of your hand or it will look like a standard deck of cards as you see here. So the RDA recommends 0 0.8 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight per day of protein. So for a 170 pound person, to figure that out, you take the 170 pounds divided by 2.2 to get the weight in kilograms, multiply that by 0.8 grams, and that leaves us with around 62 grams of protein per day that that 170 pound individual would eat, need to eat. So you might be asking yourself, what does 62 grams of protein look like in a day? Um, in terms of meals and such. And we're gonna go into that a little bit later, um, not only from a animal protein um, point of view, but also eating a plant-based diet as well. So what is protein? Protein is an essential macronutrient that is found in muscle, bone, skin, hair, and other body tissues. It's made up of these building blocks called amino acids, um, nine of which are essential for our bodies, meaning that we need to have, we need to get them through the food that we eat. Um, protein is necessary for repair, recovery, and building of body tissue. Uh, here we can see some really great sources of animal and plant-based protein. So common things like beef, chicken, salmon, um, yogurt, and eggs, and some plant-based options like nuts and seeds, tofu, tempeh. Um, some really great options. So the reason why we limit red meat in a Mediterranean diet is because animal sources account for the biggest source of saturated fat in the diet. Um, saturated fat is shown to increase LDL cholesterol, which can lead to heart disease and stroke. Um, and is, should really be limited in the diet. So this little diagram here shows a really great bird's eye view of what your overall dietary pattern should look like. So in the green here, we have the foods that we recommend eating every day without any sort of restrictions. So our fruits and vegetables, our whole grains, beans and legumes and nuts and seeds. Um, and our olive oil and herbs and spices as well. Um, in the yellow, we see items that should be eaten throughout the week in moderation. So fish and seafood eaten a couple times a week, um, poultry and eggs eaten a couple times a week, and then our low fat cheese and yogurt in moderation as well. Up on the top in red, we have red meat and sweets, which should really be limited to once or twice a month um, in small portions due to its high saturated fat content. Um, now, if you want to learn more about how fish, 
um, beans and legumes and whole grains can fit into a Mediterranean diet, um, check out the other lipids and your lifestyle webinars to find out more about that. So like I said, um, animal sources of protein, especially red meat, should really be limited due mainly to its saturated fat and sodium content. I know this table can look a little bit overwhelming, um, but we're really just going to focus on the blue and yellow arrows. So the saturated fat here and the sodium um, column here. So in terms of saturated fat in a day, we really want to um, limit that to 10% or less of the total calories that we eat. So that looks like about 22 grams of saturated fat a day or less than seven grams per meal. So you can see a lot of these items are um, close to seven or higher than seven and um, should really not be eaten in excess because of this high saturated fat content. Um, as far as sodium, healthy individuals should be eating no more than 2,300 milligrams of sodium per day or around 750 milligrams per meal. However, for individuals who already have high blood pressure, 1,500 milligrams per day um, is what's recommended. And that looks like 500 milligrams per meal. And similarly, we can see um, lamb, pork, and turkey, um, the saturated fat and sodium content as well. Um, is a little bit higher in pork. And as you can see, turkey and your other poultries are gonna be lower in saturated fat. And that's why it's recommended to eat those items a couple times a week versus um, only eating beef a couple times a month. So within protein, we have complete and incomplete protein sources. So a complete protein contains all nine of those essential amino acids that our body needs. So all animal sources of protein are going to be complete sources like meat, fish, and dairy. Um, there are, however, some plant sources of protein that are complete like tofu, tempeh, quinoa, buckwheat, amaranth, and hemp seeds. And then incomplete proteins are those that lack some of the essential amino acids. So um, those are found in plant sources like nuts, seeds, and grains. So however, we can combine two incomplete proteins to um, get all of the essential amino acids that we need. So that looks like taking a legume and pairing it with a nut and seeds or with a grain. So taking peanut butter and putting it on whole wheat bread, eating beans with rice, or having um, a whole grain cereal with soy milk. So this kind of shows you that it is possible to um, get all of the protein you need through plant sources. Um, and there are plant sources that are very abundant in protein. This is a great representation of some of those items that are abundant in protein. You can see these plant sources, lentils, edamame, black beans, almonds, um, all great protein sources. And when eating plant-based sources, not only are we getting a good amount of protein, but we're also getting the additional benefits of healthy fiber, phytonutrients, vitamins and minerals, um, a much healthier fat profile, and um, no cholesterol. Whereas when we're eating animal protein, um, there are some negatives that come with that, like saturated fat, um, there's no fiber, there's cholesterol, and they're typically higher in calories. Um, so eating plant-based protein, um, like vegetables, fruits, whole grains, legumes, and nuts and seeds can lower our risk of diabetes, heart disease, cancer, and it can promote overall health. So what does that 62 grams of protein look like in a day? Remember, um, for a 170 pound individual, we are recommending 
62 grams of protein per day or 0.8 grams per kilogram of body weight. So if we're eating a strictly animal-based um, protein, we could have an egg at breakfast, chicken at lunch, low-fat Greek yogurt as a snack, a healthy fish like salmon for dinner, which is giving us 66 grams of protein. Um, if we're eating a plant-based um, diet, we can have steel-cut oats at breakfast, um, taking that black bean, that legume, and pairing it with a whole grain like quinoa. Um, at lunch, having edamame, which is a complete protein on its own, um, and then taking tofu, which is also a complete protein, but I would recommend pairing it with rice to give you an additional five grams of protein um, coming out to 63 grams and um, meeting our daily recommended amount of protein for that 170 pound individual. And you can also um, combine plant and animal sources. So you don't have to eat animal sources at every single meal. Um, and you can really mix and match um, some of these items. So another reason to potentially limit the amount of animal products we consume is due to the environmental concerns and impact that they have. So this chart here um, shows the number of liters of water that is used to produce um, different protein sources. So it, it shows it in terms of liters of water per kilogram of food item, um, per kilocalorie, per gram of protein, and per gram of fat. As you can see, these items at the bottom use significantly more water than the items at the top, and they're all animal-based protein. So your eggs, your chicken, um, your pig, and most importantly, the biggest contributor to water usage would be your um, red meat. So um, plant-based protein sources use significantly less water um, and are definitely more environmentally friendly. Um, if you do choose to use meat and you are able, um, buying locally produced meat and dairy is a great option um, and is a little bit better on the environment. Um, again, another big environmental concern would be the amount of greenhouse gas emissions that are released um, during protein production. Um, livestock generates far more greenhouse gas emissions than plant crops. As you can see, um, this chart here shows in yellow, the amount of greenhouse gas emissions and in orange, the protein content of that food. Um, most of these look not too bad. All of these are your um, mostly plant-based sources. Um, and then here, once again, the biggest contributor would be your beef, which accounts for the largest amount of greenhouse gas emissions that are produced, um, which obviously impact the environment in a negative way and increase global warming. So just another reason to consider um, limiting the amount of animal-based protein that we are consuming on a daily basis. So if you are choosing to um, eat animal protein, there are some shopping tips that I recommend to make an informed decision um, for your overall health. So when buying ground meat products, including ground beef, poultry, and pork, it's important that we choose an option that is 90% lean or higher. Um, so that's gonna look like 90-10. So 90% lean, 10% fat, um, that's typical in ground beef. And then ground turkey and ground chicken can go up to um, as high as 99% lean. So 99% lean and 1% of fat. This is gonna really limit the amount of saturated fat and will be overall better for our health. Here, let's compare some food labels from an 80-20 beef, a 90-10 beef, and a 90-10 turkey. So this 80-20 beef here is um, pretty standard. Um, 
as you can see, the fat content, it has 23 grams of fat, nine of which are saturated. And if we remember back to one of the earlier slides, we know that we want to limit saturated fat to no more than seven grams per meal. So this already exceeds that. Now, if we look at the 90-10 beef, it's much better. 11 grams of total fat, 4.5 of which are saturated. Um, so that can definitely fit into a healthy Mediterranean diet um, when eaten um, only a couple times a month. However, our 90-10 turkey is a much better option. Um, same amount of total fat, but it only has 2.5 grams of saturated fat and pretty much the same amount of protein. Um, this is an item that you can eat um, on a weekly basis in moderation. When shopping for whole cuts of beef, um, it's really important to choose those leaner cuts. So this is a really great guide to show you some of the leanest cuts of steak that you can get. Um, so those are things like eye round roast and steak, sirloin tip side steak, and top round roast and steak. Also noting that when you do buy steak, um, it's very important to trim all of the excess and visible fat to even further reduce the amount of saturated fat we are consuming. Um, it's important to avoid fattier cuts like ribeye, New York strip, and porterhouse. Similarly, with whole cuts of pork, um, it's important to choose those leaner options. So this is a really great diagram that shows the breakdown of total fat versus saturated fat. We're mainly concerned with the saturated fat here, and you can see these are all great options. Pork tenderloin with less than one gram, um, pork loin, um, pork rib roast, um, pork shoulder are all great options. And it does show that they are pretty similar in comparison with a skinless chicken breast or chicken thigh. Um, so really avoiding the fatty cuts like pork chops, pork ribs, and loin ribs. Another really great tip is to completely limit or avoid um, processed meats. So these are things like hot dogs, sausage, deli meats, um, salami, uh, pepperoni, bologna, uh, prosciutto, things like that. Um, they're all going to be really high in sodium, which causes high blood pressure, um, leading to an increased risk of heart disease and stroke. And most of these items are also going to be high in saturated fat, uh, which, like I said, raises LDL cholesterol and increases your risk of developing heart disease and stroke. Um, as you can see here, this oven roasted turkey breast is pretty low in fat. However, it's higher in sodium um, and should be limited. Now, this salami is extremely high in fat and extremely high in sodium. Remember, if you are an individual who already has hypertension, we recommend no more than 1500 milligrams of sodium per day. So this one serving of salami already eats up pretty much your daily allotment of sodium and is overall just not a great option. Um, something else we recommend avoiding um, in your diet are what I like to call fake meats. So these are those heavily processed um, meat substitutes that are often much higher in saturated fat and sodium than real meat. Um, what I wanna highlight today is the Beyond Burger and Impossible Burger here. Um, as you can see, they are just as high, if not higher in saturated fat than even this 80-20 ground beef, which um, obviously we recommend a 90-10, so it would be even lower in saturated fat. Um, but they're high in saturated fat. And not only that, but they are much, much higher um, in sodium than your real beef. So it would be better off just eating their real beef at that point. Um, this Morningstar black bean burger isn't a bad option. Um, 
bean burgers are really great choices for plant-based protein. However, um, it's important to limit your pre-made ones. If you are looking for a pre-made option, really making sure to read the nutrition label, looking for one lower in sodium and with as few ingredients as possible. But um, overall, it's recommended to just make your own. Um, pair a bean with a whole grain to create all of your essential amino acids and um, create a really great plant-based protein option. Um, and overall, just focus on whole plant sources of protein. So things like tofu, tempeh, legumes, nuts and seeds, and whole grains. So when we are handling raw meat, it's very, very important to use safe and sanitary practices to um, limit the risk of developing a foodborne illness or limit cross-contamination in any way. So the number one rule with any food handling is to thoroughly wash your hands with soap and hot water before and especially after handling raw meat to avoid cross-contamination, always being sure not to touch something after touching raw meat um, is important as well. Another tip is to use different cutting boards for raw and cooked items. Um, so a, a basic color coding system is yellow for poultry, green for fruits and vegetables, red for red meat, um, white is typically for dairy products, and then cooked food here is on blue and fish and seafood on this brown color. Um, obviously, you might not have the space or resources to have six different colored cutting boards, which is um, a little bit much to have. <laughs> so um, recommended to thoroughly wash all of your cutting boards and utensils um, after having raw meat on them with hot water, running it through the dishwasher. Um, even if you can just have two cutting boards in your home, one for all of your raw food items and another for your pre-cooked or um, you know, your fruit and vegetable items. Um, this is really important to prevent cross-contamination. Um, so if you are cutting you know, a raw piece of chicken on your cutting board, make sure it is thoroughly, thoroughly washed before um, chopping up some lettuce on that same cutting board. Um, when defrosting meat, it is very important that you never defrost your meat um, in room temperature. So don't just pull out that ground beef and stick it on the counter all day. Um, that promotes bacterial growth and can be very harmful. So instead, um, you know, take that meat out of the freezer the day before and stick it in your refrigerator or in the microwave, or you can defrost meat under cold running water, not hot water, cold water. Um, and it's also important to note to not leave your raw or cooked meat um, unrefrigerated for more than two hours. Lastly, avoid washing your meat and especially your poultry. Um, I know it's a common misconception that we need to wash our chicken before we prepare it, but that's absolutely not true. And instead can be much more harmful. It can splatter and spread germs and bacteria to other surfaces, even if we don't see it. So when cooking meat, it's important to um, cook it to the proper internal temperature. So for whole cuts of beef, of beef pork, um, and other red meats, Cooking it to an internal temperature of 145 degrees Fahrenheit is recommended. For any ground meats, um, cooking it a little bit more to 160 degrees Fahrenheit. However, for ground poultry and any poultry products, so whether that's a breast, whole bird, um, legs, or ground poultry, it's vital that you cook it to 165 degrees Fahrenheit as poultry is the biggest culprit for um, foodborne illnesses. So it's very important to cook it thoroughly. Um, when storing meat, 
it's important to store it away from prepared foods in the refrigerator, preferably on the lowest shelf, um, covered and with some sort of tray underneath it, just in case it were to leak anywhere, um, you would have that tray um, to catch that stuff. Raw ground meat and poultry can be stored in the refrigerator for one to two days after you purchase it. Um, raw whole cuts of meat can be stored in the fridge for three to five days and cooked meat and poultry can be stored in the fridge for an additional three to four days. Um, my biggest recommendation is when in doubt, throw it out. Um, if you're unsure how long something has been in your fridge or your freezer, if it has a weird color or a weird smell, or if you're just not sure, um, don't risk it, throw it in the garbage. This is a nice little diagram showing you how your home fridge should look. So having your covered meat and poultry items with a tray underneath here. And then obviously most home refrigerators have um, a little drawer for your produce. So putting that um, produce there um, in a commercial kitchen, you would have your raw meat even lower, um, but at a home kitchen, this is what's recommended. So when you're freezing meat, um, the USDA recommends that um, your uncooked cuts of meat, so your steaks, roasts, things like that, can be stored for four to 12 months. Um, your ground meat for three to four months. Um, your uncooked whole um, poultry, so your whole turkey for Thanksgiving can be stored for up to 12 months. Your raw chicken breasts or something like that can be stored for nine months and your cooked poultry can be stored for four months. Um, this is obviously gonna depend on the temperature and reliability of your freezer. So if um, it shifts in temperature a lot, it may be best to err on this, the lower side um, and err on the side of safety. So these are some really great recipes that you can use to incorporate healthy meat options into your um, Mediterranean diet. So this first one is turkey burgers with grated zucchini. This is using a lean ground turkey um, and very limited ingredients. Um, the grated zucchini makes these very, very moist and kind of limits the amount of condiments you need. Um, super quick, super easy. Next, we have a really great turkey chili. Again, it uses a really lean ground turkey um, and some low sodium beans and corn, lots of veggies in there. Um, always recommend low sodium or no salt added canned items and always recommend rinsing them to remove an additional 40% of that sodium. Lastly, we have a quick and easy and inexpensive chicken stir fry. This uses chicken breasts and frozen mixed vegetables. Super easy, super quick. Um, if you would like to see live cooking demos of these recipes, um, check them out. And in conclusion, um, to summarize what we've talked about today, Meat is a source of complete protein um, and animal products account for the largest source of saturated fat in our diet. That's why we would like to limit them as much as possible. Um, and although meat is a source of complete protein, there are complete protein and complementary protein that can be abundant in plant sources. So it is so possible and doable to get all the protein you need through plant-based sources. And finally, we wanna make sure we're limiting our red meat consumption to only one to two times per month. When we are eating red meat, choosing lean varieties like 90-10 beef or those um, lean cuts of steak. Um, lean poultry should be eaten around two times per week. And we are limiting or completely avoiding processed meat products. Um, we're always being sure to use safe food handling and storage techniques when preparing meat. 
Um, thank you so much for listening. And I hope you learned something and are able to incorporate these tips into your Mediterranean diet.